Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to episode 73 of my Minecraft survival series. This is ridiculous. Um, I was actually just over here. Let me see if I can get out so I can show you where I was over. No. Uh, yeah, okay, that'll work. I was over here at our guardian farm, okay? And I was going to go ahead and take down our beacon pyramid. I was going to run that home to Luna, and we were going to get started on our project today. Uh, but something caught my eye, and it turns out to be this. I am so glad I came over to investigate, uh, because what I found over here was a bunch of animals that have spawned on this island. You know, they spawned in, and then they went to get a drink of water, because it's a very taxing process, of course, spawning in somewhere. Uh, and they went to get a drink of water, they fell down into the watering hole, and they were never able to get out. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and dig them a little bit of a slope here, so that way they can easily get in and out of here. But that's not all, because, you know, today, what we're gonna be doing, our big project for today, is we're building a barn, a home for our animals back in Luna. Uh, and you know what, these guys are more than welcome to come along if they would like to. I'll give them a little bit of time to make a decision. Uh, maybe towards the end of the episode, we'll come back and see what they wanna do. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this project welcome back to Luna more specifically Luna's farming district where you can see I've done a little bit of planning in between episodes uh, so let me back up over here and I'll show you what I've got in place right now uh, basically what I was thinking over here is we might do some elevation changes we might build our our barn that we're going to build today above this little hill right here that we've been kind of figuring out how we want to work in because you know I don't want this area to be too flat you know like if you look at our house and then you look at our stable they're all on the same level they're on the same y value uh but if you look at jumping jack lanterns over here if you look at our horse shelter that we built uh pretty recently uh, you can see that they're on different elevations and also speaking of our horse shelter that's at a 45 degree angle while some of these builds over here most of them are at 90 degrees uh and there's so many numbers in between 45 and 90 as well uh, that I was thinking we go ahead and, and build the barn today on not only a different elevation but also at a different angle um, so we're not looking at a straight 90 degree build we're not looking at a diagonal 45 degree build we're going to be doing a build at an odd angle which is going to be pretty fun I think because that's something I've been wanting to experiment with and get better at uh, and I think this right here this is going to be the perfect place to do it uh, so let me go ahead and get this project site prepared and I'll be back with you guys in just a few minutes and then we can get started. Oh, and let me just say that even though we spent an episode getting this area laid out and making our terrain changes and stuff like that, uh, things are going to be subject to change here. We're going to be, you know, adding and subtracting land as needed for each individual build uh, because the builds aren't planned out. This this district is not planned out. The plans occur as we build, really. Uh, now, does that void any of the work we've done out here? All the grass we put down and all the elevation changes we've worked on already? No, of course not, because we need to get a good base in place before we actually start building stuff out here. You know, it's just how it goes. You need a canvas to work on. So let's go ahead and get in an outline of our structure. Uh, we're gonna have to be a little bit more precise than we would uh, Precise, yes, very precise. Precise block placement right there. Then we would if we were building like a, a 90 degree structure, okay? So this is meant to represent a flat wall. This is where the wall will turn. We'll have a separate wall going this way. Um, and we want to maintain a uniform section width of four, I think. Um, so yeah, we're a little bit long on this one. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get the rest of these in. And by the time we're done with this, by the time we make it around to the other side, uh, what we should have is a shape that's basically a rectangle. Um, a rectangle that's going to be sitting kind of at a little bit of an odd angle on this hill. Um, and that's that's what I'm hoping for. It's going to be a pretty simple structure uh, because, you know, we're just getting started with this type of building. Um, and we'll improve upon it um, as we go through this series, as we get more proficient with it. Um, but I think uh, starting with a simple structure and getting more complex as we go along is probably the best route to take since this is going to be a little complicated. Uh, this is going to be our front entrance right here, I think. And now that I'm looking at it, this is a little small for what I had in mind. So since we are going to be expanding the structure, we're probably going to first want to expand the hill that's going to sit on top of, and then we'll tear down the structure that we just made and redo it, which means I could have easily cut out that last clip from the video, but I think I am actually going to keep in here, uh, because the thing is, I anticipate making a lot of mistakes in this episode, uh, because this is going to be the first time we're trying to build at, at this 
type of angle, a structure at this type of angle. Um, and I'm actually going to, I think, showcase some of those mistakes I'm going to make today uh, because that's what happens. Like, you know, nobody builds perfectly, especially if you don't pre-plan builds like I don't. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not always perfect, but a lot of the times, uh, you know, all the different trial and error gets cut out of videos. I think I'm going to kind of display that a little bit today. Uh, maybe not every little mistake because I don't want a four hour long video, uh, but I will try to showcase a few of them at least. All right, so now we got a little bit more room to play with out here. So I think instead of going with four wide sections of walls, we're going to go six. So we'll count out two, three, four, five, six. Bring it back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Round the corner and we'll go two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll just carry that the whole way around. Now, I think the hardest part about this build is also going to be the most important part. It's just about getting the general structure of this build looking correct. Since it is built on an angle, you know, it's going to be a little bit more awkward to do than if it was just straight. If it was straight, we could just build like a big old straight rectangle. Uh, but we do have to pay attention to all these lines and just build up from the outline that we've done. So we know that we're doing this right, making sure everything is even, making sure everything is evenly spaced. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get up a bunch of terracotta walls up here, try to get the general shape of the building down, uh, and then will come the interesting part of trying to figure out how we're going to fit a roof on this thing. Now, I mean, what kind of roof would not look horrible? That's that's what I want, something that does not look horrible. Um, I'm saying my standard is very high here, <laughs> obviously. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm working with so far. And I'm probably not gonna end up rolling with this, but this was something I was thinking might look kind of interesting. If we had like kind of a gentle, gradual slope going up to about right here, uh, then we went steeper and then gradual slope, gradual slope, steeper, and then, you know, gradual slope down again. Uh, and I realized that's probably a little complex for something that I said we we're going to try to keep simple. Uh, but I feel like the roof is going to need something because the thing is, it's just going to be a very long roof, you know? It's going to be a very long roof and we're going to need something to break up that flat plane. Uh, I'm just not sure how I want to go about that quite yet. So this should give us a pretty good idea of what the roof is going to look like from the front and from the back. Um, I'm still not sure how we want to handle these like diagonal pieces where the wall like, you know, sinks in by a block as we go down. But, you know, that's going to take some trial and error. We will figure that out as we go along. But let's go ahead and take a peek at this. And oh, no, 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 no. Maybe what would be smarter is taking this a section at a time, then taking a step back and looking at it and seeing what we need to do. Uh, so basically, we can take this over across this way to where the six wide section of wall kind of meets up with the next six wide section of wall. And we'll kind of figure out where we need to go from here. Um, so let's just go ahead and throw this right here. That will bridge into the next section. Um, and I don't know that we're going to put that on top of there quite yet. Let's just head back up and have a peek at it, figure out what we need to do. All right. So um, looking at this, my first thoughts are that the, the roof needs to stick out farther than we would normally make it stick out. Um, we also want to get our supports in there. Our spruce supports, I think, need to go in there. Um, and that will allow us to to build the roof out a little bit more. It'll give us more of an idea of how far out the roof is going to need to come. Uh, if the roof is sticking out more, then we can kind of blend it into each section a little bit better, I think. Uh, so let me go ahead and make it daytime and give that a try. Okay, so I, I think I think overlapping it is probably going to be a good way to get this done. Like if, if we carry out the transition on the roof further than the transitions of the walls, I think that could definitely help out. Like I kind of started doing this on accident, but I think this is going to give us a much smoother transition into each of the sections. Um, so we can kind of back up and see how this is looking. And I would say that that is definitely an improvement. That's definitely an improvement. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, so now we got to figure out what to do with the center section. Well, I've been staring at this for a few minutes. I even went and uh, did the back. I mirrored this look on the back over there. Uh, just to see if looking at this from a different angle gave, a, gave me a better idea of what to do here. Uh, but I think no matter what, having this peek over uh, and do what we've been planning on doing with the roof is, is going to be just in general, structurally way too similar 
uh, to our stable. Um, it, you know, you kind of see like the, the same thing going on there. And I don't want that. That's not what I want to happen. Uh, so I think what might be better is if we just simplified this a little bit and went with like, you know, just kept this angle of the roof going the whole way. Uh, just the stair slab, stair slab kind of, you know, thing going throughout the whole way across. But what we can do to break it up, because I said we need to break up the flat plane of it, is I'm thinking we can add dormer windows along the sides here, maybe above each of the pillars, uh, maybe like three dormer windows on each side. That might, that could possibly work. I don't know. Um, but there is only one way to find out. I think that's probably our best option for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Uh, you know, because, you know, how I build is through a process of trial and error. I've mentioned that many times. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do this, get this in place. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just meet back up here in a little bit and discuss plan C. All right. So I went ahead and did the edges of both sides and we can have a peek and see how it looks. See if this is something we want to continue with. I think it is uh, because like the thing is, like if you if you come up here and I'm going to show you this effect that I really like. If you come up here, you can see that this this build is obviously at an angle, right? Everything is off center. It's at an angle. But looking at it from the ground, from our paths, like, you know, it's it's a little it's. It, it almost looks flat. It's not as apparent, which is better than I was hoping for. That's better than the effect I was actually hoping for with this. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to roll with. So like for right now to start off with, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with the walls, like how we just did plain terracotta walls the whole way back. I'm just going to connect the roof the whole way back. I'm not going to worry about the dormer windows for right now. We're just going to connect the slabs with the slabs, the stairs with the stairs along the roof, and then we'll figure out where we want to go from there. So I thought rather than skipping forward, it might be good to give you guys a little little peek at what I'm doing with the roof over here. Uh, basically just doing the six wide spacing. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, just doing the same thing, just sticking with the terracotta walls. And we're going to be bringing this up to the top just like this. Uh, that way everything stays even because that's what we want is for everything to stay even. Um, so with the slabs, we'll do pretty much the same thing. We'll just carry it over to the edge here uh, and then we'll start a whole new thing. We'll go one break that uh, and then two, three, four, five, six, and do the same thing. Uh, so that's how we're going to run the whole way up. Now this is going to create lines in our roof. This will create lines. Um, so that's what I'm thinking we're going to use our dormer windows for is uh, not only to, to break up the plane, but also to break up the lines as well. I think that's going to be a really good way of handling this. Oh, and I feel like I should also mention the reason why we're using pretty much exclusively half slabs and stairs here is because we want the roof to be completely non-spawnable. We are going to have villagers wandering around here. We are going to be wandering around here. We don't want any mobs spawning on any of the roofs around this area. So that's the reason why we're going with bottom slabs and stairs rather than, you know, using full blocks and maybe creating a bit of noise to break up the lines. Uh, you know, I think this will work just as well with our dormer windows, uh, but also make sure that we maintain a non-spawnable structure that's bouncy when you fall off of it. All right. So now the general structure, the general shape of the roof should be in and yeah, I mean, I think that's going to work. I, I told you about the lines, the lines we were expecting to be there. They're very apparent. Uh, so we cannot leave it at that. I think the dormer windows, though, are going to sit right on top of each of those lines centered on top of them. We'll have three dormer windows on each side uh, to break up that that roof. But I think overall, this is good. This is a good general shape, a general structure for it. Um, and I think now I'm going to go ahead and get started getting those uh, those dormer windows put in. All right, so I know it's getting a little bit dark out here. It's going to be hard to see, but I'm just getting a sample little dormer window put in. And I was thinking we have a peek at it together, see what we think of it, see what changes we want to make to it. Um, I think that's going to be good. Uh, maybe we can make it a little bit wider, I think. Uh, wider would be good. Um, and yeah, I mean, it definitely gets rid of these lines from the point where they start upward. Uh, from the bottom, we can maybe just add a bit of noise in there to get rid of that. Um, let's go ahead and have a peek at it from the front. Make sure it's not going to be too obtrusive. Uh, we just want to stick out a little bit just like that, uh, to where it kind of breaks up that plane, just barely breaks up the plane. I think that's going to be good. Uh, let me sleep through the night and get a roof on that. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got a roof over our dormer window and I think that's going to be good. It's a good width. It's a good height. Uh, so now we just have what we have five more of these to do like over each of the lines in our roof. Uh, so let me go ahead and take care of that.
Uh, once again, uh, so I don't just fast forward past this, I want to give you guys an idea of what I'm actually doing here, connecting the roofs up at least. Uh, so you can see what we're doing here is we're kind of going with a zigzag pattern, like the uh, each of the dormers winds up uh, on the block adjacent to where the uh, the switcheroo is in the roof, like where it zigs, the dormers like kind of go in, and where it zags, the dormers from the other side kind of go in, if that makes any sense. Uh, I just want to give you guys an idea of what this actually looks like, because again, I'm, I'm trying to pay very close attention to what I'm actually doing here uh, in order to make everything kind of fit together the way it should, you know? Oh, and if it seems like I went through a lot of work to get the roofs like all connected up and, and you know, looking good and being all straight and everything like that, uh, just to turn around and then destroy them like I'm doing right now, uh, let me go ahead and say that it, it was necessary to do that. It's necessary to, to get you know, a good general shape in there. So that way this stuff all works out when I do finally connect it up. You know, I, I am tearing out a lot of the work that I was doing before, but it was necessary in order to get to this point, if that makes any sense. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you don't know what you're doing, and I clearly did not know what I was doing when I started doing this, uh, it's better to just get into basics, get into general shape, the general structure, and then, you know, figure out where you need to go from there to figure out like where you can add details, where you can add like different changes and stuff and actually make it work but you know you have to have that that good general shape general idea of you know what the overall structure is going to look like to start off with ow and, uh, that should just about do it for the basic shape of our barn uh we could just back up have a have a better look at it so you can see what it, the general shape of it is going to look like and i think this is going to work well for us uh because now we have you know a good idea of what each of the sides look, look like we have a good idea of what the front and the back are going to look like all that's left for the exterior is adding all those details, all the windows, all the, you know, all the stuff that actually makes it come to life. You know, at this point, this was the hard part though. The details, that's going to be the easy part of this build. It was just making sure everything was lined up and looking right. Uh, that was going to be the difficult part of this. And I think we've, we've accomplished that for the most part. We've got it looking pretty decent. Uh, the next thing I want to take care of though, before we get started on the details and all that stuff is I want to head over into the interior and just get a basic general interior layout kind of in place. Now, we're not going to focus too heavy on the interior in this episode, but I am going to give you an idea of what I'm going for in here. Uh, so we, I coated the walls in oak stairs because the exterior of the barn is painted. The interior is not. Uh, the interior is going to be a little bit rougher, and I want the interior to reflect that. That's kind of the idea I'm going with here. Uh, we're going to have the individual stalls kind of marked out. Well, they're already marked out by these slime blocks right here, so I just have to get them built up. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on showing you guys the interior, but you know, I do already have a plan in place, uh, and it's going to be fairly simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the basic interior in, and uh, we'll focus on the details at probably around the same time as we focus on the details for the exterior. Uh, we just want to make sure we have a good base for each. Oh, and because I told you guys I was going to share my mistakes with you, you can see the center walkway is very, very cramped. Uh, so what we're going to be doing to fix that is just kind of extend the walkway out a little bit because the stalls themselves are pretty spacious. They could stand to lose a block uh, and the center walkway could stand to gain a block. So that's pretty much what is about to happen. And I think at this point, we can pretty much say that we have the basics down. Like we have the basic shape of the interior of the exterior. And now it's time to go ahead and start working in those details, those rough details, such as windows, uh, those finer details, such as, you know, the borders and like the, the you know, doorways and awnings and all that stuff uh, that we're going to be putting in here. But uh, let's go ahead and take a quick walkthrough of the barn. And you can kind of see like how everything is laid out. You kind of think about how you would do things differently than from how I've done them and from how I would do them, like how you would decorate decorate this place, you know, uh, but I just want to show you guys this real quick before we start working in the details and stuff like that, which you're about to get started on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call Watchdog over and we're going to put on a little bit of music and I'm going to try to get this thing finished up for you guys today.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. We have a herd of sheep following us because we're bringing them over here to their new home over here in the farming district. Uh, we got their barn all set up. And aren't you guys so excited about this? You don't have to live under a wall anymore. You actually get to, to be out in the fresh open air and do stuff. Uh, we got our, our sheep dog right here. Uh, we have various uh, dogs placed around here. They're going to be designated with green collars. The farming district dogs, uh, they're going to be designated by green collars. Uh, but we need all sheep to come this way. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. You guys are very slow. All right, so I think we got a better way to do this. We'll just bring them straight over the fence. That seems like a better way to get them inside. And then we'll just come out here and break this, and then we'll take a quick tour of this place. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm actually pretty happy with this. I really do like this barn because I was very iffy on building this at an angle uh, when we started. I'll be honest with you. I did not think this was going to work, but you know what? It did. It did work. I'm pretty happy with it uh, overall. I mean, this isn't bad for our first, like, build at a non-45 or non-90 degree angle, you know? Uh, so as far as the landscaping goes, you can see we gave the sheep plenty of grass to regrow their wool when they do get sheared. We gave them a fresh source of water back here. Um, and you can see they have plenty of room to roam around. We don't block off the individual stalls or anything like that. Uh, so that way they can roam freely throughout this place. But I don't think they're going to be able to escape it. Uh, they do have plenty of plenty of room to roam around, uh, but they're not going to be roaming around the entire farming district or the entire city because this whole area is fenced in. The only real gate, uh, the only real way out is through the front gate. Um, and we can go ahead and tour our attic as well, our hay loft up here. Uh, where we keep our hay, our food for the sheep. Um, and you know, it's pretty simple up here. There's not too much going on, but I did want to show it to you since that is part of the build. Uh, but we'll go ahead and pop down here and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it for the tour. Oh, and don't think I forgot about these guys over here by our guardian farm. Oh, no, no, no. They have decided to come with us. So everybody, everybody, cows, pigs, sheep, lend me your ears. I need you to come with me. If we could just have some semblance of order here, just a small semblance of order, that would be great. I realize that asking you to zipper into a single file line might be a bit much. Um, but what I will ask is that you not shove your friends off of the bridge into squid and guardian infested waters. That's just not something we do where I come from in Luna, where we're going right now. That may be how things work on the island, but I'm going to have to ask you to kind of just be aware of your surroundings, you know, because you're not staying here and you need to be considerate of your friends. Okay, you just go shove everybody. All right, just whoever's in the back, just push everybody else forward. Whoever's in the back, just push, just push. Oh, perfect. Every you're doing great. All right, so I think we finally got everybody with us now. We got sheep inside of cows, cows inside of sheep, pigs inside of chickens. Everybody's just pushing each other along. Uh, and we're going to move everybody back to Luna. Uh, we got the, the nether tunnels all blocked off so they that way they don't get lost. There's only one way they could possibly go. Uh, until we get to Luna, then I'm thinking they're probably going to spread out because there's no way I could reasonably block off uh, any of their areas. So uh, we might lose a couple there to uh, wherever they wander off to. But, you know, we'll, we'll get as many to the farm as we can. Come on, piggies. Come on, piggies. Everybody through the portal. Yes, through the portal. Perfect. I think that should just be about everybody except for this uh, last chicken right here. I think that's uh, I think he's the only one left. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Come on. Come on, chicky, chicky. All right, so that's everybody in here and also I've added some fence posts throughout this place Just a little bit of creative fence post placement uh, because in certain editions of Minecraft if an animal can wander more than 20 blocks Apparently there's a chance of it despawning uh, So I wanted to make sure that wouldn't happen So I made sure there's no areas where they can wander more than 20 blocks in any given direction Hopefully I did anyway, but yeah I think that is probably going to be it for us today and I don't mind the way that looks actually I think that actually looks cool It, it kind of gives it a little bit more life and gives them a little obstacle course to kind of run through even though they just kind of run straight into it but all the animals seem super happy i am super happy that they finally have a place to live and i think that is going to be it for us today guys so if you have enjoyed this episode please feel free to hit that little thumbs up button that would mean a whole lot to me and if you want to see more please remember to subscribe but as always i just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today i deeply appreciate it and until next time i am lobo and i will see you guys later